Morning guys, this is Brent with Likens Motorsports. I was going through some pictures this morning on uh, my Flickr account and ran across this build and uh, did this one eight years ago. So the amount of pictures and video that I have will be pretty much non-existent. But I um, just wanted to show you guys, you, you all seem to like the, uh, the little 289s and 302s quite a bit. This engine is a 289, and uh, it was built for um, a customer who did some uh, FIA road race uh, events. So uh, there were specific rules that we needed to follow in order to build this engine, and uh, it ended up being a fun little build and made a good bit of horsepower for for the rules that we had to uh, stick to. So let's look at uh, some of the pictures that I have and we'll go over this build. Alright, so for the rules uh, we had to stay with uh, a specific amount of overbore and the same stroke as the factory engine um, but you could play around with some of the, the bottom end parts. So this one came out to be, if I remember correctly, about 292 cubic inches and uh, we used a factory I'm sorry it was an RPM uh, back when RPM made cranks an RPM uh, small block forward crankshaft with a 287 stroke um, we ended up using so you guys are gonna think I'm nuts but uh, we ended up using some Molnar 5700 length rods and uh, the pistons came out uh, if I remember correctly, somewhere around the one inch mark on compression height, you could probably do the math real quick and and figure that out. Um, figure an eight one nine zero deck height, two eight seven stroke, five seven hundred rod. You can do the math and figure that out. Uh, so we ended up with some custom race tech pistons. The uh, the rods were small block Chevrolet rods and we had to narrow those on the big end to fit a small block Ford rod journal size. So everything uh, came together. We had the block machined, uh, same machining processes that I always do. We added some lifter bore bushings to correct any factory discrepancies on the lifter bore angle and location. So you use a, a BHJ fixture in order to do that, and you put the lifter bore bushings in based on that, not just uh, opening up the factory holes. So uh, race tech pistons, uh, we used the correct 289 heads, which had really small chambers. I'll show those in a second. So we could get away with a flat top piston. Um, if I remember correctly, compression ratio was around um, 11 or 11 and a half to 1. Uh, we were limited to a solid flat tappet camshaft so I had a custom solid flat tappet cam ground uh, com, comp cams did that one for me. Um, nitrite core we used some trend tool steel lifters and um, we were limited to a 500 lift I think the duration at 50 thousandths was somewhere around uh, the 246-247 mark. Um, I could probably dig out the cam card if so desired. Um, we used a Ford Racing timing set and um, I'll show some other goodies on the bottom end. So on the bottom end side of things you can see that those are not factory main caps. Those are actually program uh, back when they made main caps. Program main caps were used some ARP studs. That is a precision oil pumps uh, oil pump and we went with a Canton uh, front sump road race pan so we used a Canton um, oil pump pickup there. Um, on the cylinder head side of things, we had to use factory cylinder heads, but there was no rule stating that um, we couldn't use um, titanium valves. So that's who we went with on on the valves. We used some Ferrea 
titanium intake and exhaust valves. The heads got fitted with some bronze valve guides and um, we were able to use the factory seats since they're a little bit softer. Um, the heads were ported and if I remember correctly um, I can't remember who did the port work. It was either Joe Crane or Laws Mayfield but uh, if I remember right uh, somewhere between 200 and 220 CFM um, and those were done uh, to, to pick up some intake flow and to bump the performance up a little bit so there's a shot of the Ferreira valves and some chamber smoothing you can see the spark plug location was all smoothed out very small chamber uh, which helps to um, when you're on on the lower side of compression I'm not saying 11 or 11 and a half is is low but uh, you know it's not 13 and 14 so that helps with the piston design that you're able to use a flat top instead of a dome piston so there's the rocker arm so you'll you'll see a couple different things here um, first, I sent this engine out with two sets of rocker arms. So uh, I set the engine up with some roller rockers. Those are Comp Ultra Golds. And um, sent those with a set of push rods. Um, I also had a set of factory rocker arms uh, cryogenically treated and uh, set those with their own push rods and sent those with the customer as well uh, just in case that uh, the tech inspections got really really um, in-depth and uh, he could put this back to factory spec you can see uh, we're running some beehive valve springs there and some titanium valve spring retainers a good bit of information here is that we broke in that camshaft with the nitrite core and the tool steel lifters with those springs so those springs were 350 pounds across the nose and um, we didn't uh, we didn't pull the springs or change springs or anything like that for break-in you also see that it has a Victor Junior intake on it um, it was not dynoed with the Weber setup that I'll show here in a minute um, because we were not able to dyno with Weber set up on this particular dyno it still proves to be uh, a big hassle today I don't really like doing that so what I did was threw a Victor Junior intake on and um, uh, dynoed it that way and then when we went to ship the engine I swapped it back over to the Weber carburetors um, uh, to be straight up about it everybody likes the Webers because uh, they look cool and they do look cool but uh, with modern camshafts and induction they don't offer any uh, performance upgrades at all in in terms of horsepower or torque so we'll look at uh, a picture of the engine on the dyno and then I'll show you a dyno video Alright, so engine sounded really strong and um, you could hear it when it got up on the cam, it really took off there. So there's a, a picture of uh, everything ready to rock and roll, got the Victor Junior intake off of it, got the Weber, uh, Weber setup from Jim Inglis on it. Um, got everything set up, You've seen the quick time bell housing behind it there, and the factory pulleys and alternator bracket and alternator 
setup there. Uh, good looking little engine. And then we have some pictures of uh, of the linkages for the Weber's all set up. Spherical rod ends and, and bell crank assemblies. All really nice pieces. Should be for, uh, you know, $6,000. $6, Oh, I forgot to tell you how much horsepower the engine made. So it made 443 horsepower at 7,000 RPM and 390 pound-feet of torque. So nice running little 289 small block Ford. Thank you guys very much for hanging out with me and watching this video. And uh, may have something else for you here later on to enjoy on the 4th of July weekend. Hope you guys are doing good. Talk to you soon.